Hello, and welcome back to We're Podding This Together. This is the podcast where we go through all of your favorite, or not so favorite, Disney Channel movies, so feel free to follow us along. I am Josh, and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Lori. I'm Sammy. So grab your rollerblades, head down to Venice Beach, because today we're going over your favorite 1998 rollerblading film, Brink. Do you guys remember this movie at all? So I never really saw this film as a kid, maybe once or twice here or there. I can't really remember that much about it. Did you guys ever see this growing up? I remember the actor who is, who played Brink, but I don't remember him being in this movie specifically. I loved this movie as a kid. I There's a lot of like phrases that I remember were shown on the like preview um, for the movie. Uh, they really stuck with me. It was great. What's in the bag? <laughs> Nanya. Nanya what? Nanya business. Oh! What? Those were the coolest things. I feel like um, this was the first movie that I, I saw a lot of like build up for. Because I watched a lot of Disney as a kid. I don't know if that's been clear. I was a Disney fanatic so i watched a lot of disney and i remember a huge build-up with like the previews and i remember just like getting ready to watch this movie so i feel like uh, it was a big part of my life Um, did either of you rollerblade back in the day i mean i tried you know being like a skater being all cool and like doing stunts and stuff Flipping ollies, you know? I tried to be the cool kid, but... So, skateboarding I, I, or rollerblading? You know... Are they the same tricks? To me, I just lump them together because they're, like, both those sports that I can't do, but I wish I could. I feel like skateboarding is a thousand times cooler. I was, watch- like, watching Whoa. this, I feel like rollerblading might be harder, though. No? No, you can, like... I don't think it is. You can, like, flip the board and stuff. You can do more tricks with, like, the board with a skateboard. But with, like, rollerblading, it's just, like, you go up a wall and you flip around a couple times and then you come down. I don't know. I felt like uh, the tricks in this movie were, like, a really watered-down parkour. Um... (laughs) But they were I've so seen, cool. Yeah, they were cool, but I've seen, like, I feel like watching Skateboarders was a lot cooler. Okay, but you can't deny that after watching this movie, you didn't want to rollerblade. I, I still don't want to rollerblade, personally. <laughs> you What? What is wrong with you? I lived on a hill as a kid, like, um, in, in the dip of, like, a V. Um, the listeners can't see my hands, but... I think they know what a V is, at least. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I should hope. So there was like, it went uphill both ways, but if I went up some, I could go downhill either way I went. And I had a neighbor a few houses down who like taught me how to rollerblade. And so I would just like put the rollerblades on and just glide downhill <laughs> pretty much. It wasn't so much teaching as just gravity, but it was <laughs> a lot of fun. Getting some sick air. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Cool, so let's jump into the movie, which starts with the character Brink waking up and his mom in very typical, like, sitcom Disney Channel fashion is just begging him to eat breakfast. And he does uh, chocolate syrup straight from the bottle. Which seems like it'd be one of those things that seems, when you get your first place and you're like, I'm finally an adult, it's happened, that you would try to do and immediately regret it. Yeah, it's not good. I don't feel like it's part of a balanced breakfast. It's it's a part uh, of the breakfast, just like Pop Tarts. So yeah, he comes down and his mom is there getting ready for work. You know, as a um, as a good old real estate agent, as all mothers in the Disney Channel realm tend to be. Exactly. Yes, we've already had one, but you know that's okay. I mean, that's a pretty good job. Yeah, right now we're at two out of three Disney Channel movies have real estate agent moms yeah. because Amy's mom and under wraps of course was a real estate agent as well. This is uh before the uh housing bubble burst. So I feel like it was a pretty steady job at the time. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a good point. And it would allow moms the flexibility to like be around the kids, like flexible schedule. Yeah. 
Maybe I'm looking into this too far. A little historical (laughs) context for you younger Mm. listeners out there. Brink is super rushing because we find out he needs to meet his friends to Blade, and he eventually meets them at the bus stop where they yell at him for being late. And as they're yelling at him, the bus goes... Does the bus go by as they're yelling at them? That's how I remembered it. Yeah, they're like, he's going to be late. And then he gets there as the bus leaves. Sad day. Although... The buses there come, like, every 15 minutes, so it's not that bad. (laughs) I don't know about back then. So they end up skating, or blading. I'm not sure which verb is more accurate here. Um, They end up blading to the skate park. And once they get there, we get to meet X-Blade for the first time. And X-Blade is the opposite of what our Brink and Buddies are, which is soul skaters, meaning that they do it for the passion, not for the money. And X-Blade... Soul skaters! X Blades is the they have sponsorship and stuff, so they get paid to skate. Yeah, they're the legit team, you know, the legit rollerbladers. They got sponsors, they got money, they got photographers. They're all up in those magazines. Which I feel like I, that's the way to blade. When I looked into it, I was like, how many rollerblading magazines could there have been? And the answer is a lot. There's a significant amount of rollerblading material to have been read. I'm not sure if any of those exist now, but... Well, duh. It I was the so. coolest thing. <laughs> the part that stood out to this for me is they were all kind of battling for the half pipes or whatever, and their sponsor is this older kind of shady car salesman sort of dude, and at one point, he's talking to Val, the leader of the X-Blades, and he's like, we have to get these losers out of here, referencing the teenage children, that the very young teenage children that he's trying to get out of the skating rink, like, as an adult, and just, he seems way too comfortable with trying to tell this other teenager how to kick these loser teenagers out of the way. Well, and I mean, Val's his... Like, Don't worry, I'll yeah. get them out. His teenagers are clearly, you know, more important than these other teenagers. Yeah, they're making him money. Well, what I'm wondering, so now when you talk about rollerbladers, it's usually in kind of a derogatory, like, it's lame. I was too young to know at the time, but I wonder if even back then, rollerbladers were, like, kind of now how the hoverboarders, like, those were getting mocked kind of mercilessly. Were rollerblade, was rollerblading cool back then, or did everybody know it was pretty? I think traditional, like, skating with the four wheels, that was, like, not cool. Okay. Roller skating. But, like, then roller blades came out. And they had, like, wheels on the bottom of them in a line. They were cool. Okay. Yeah, the arrangement of the wheels definitely makes a difference in the coolness factor. And your wheels could have, like, designs on them. Or they could, like, glow in the dark. Are you kidding me? And you could have different straps and stuff. (laughs) They were cool. (laughs) The way you're defending it's just making me think that you're very... Hal and Malcolm in the middle with this rollerblading or roller skating or whatever. <laughs> like, secret I roller skater. only had, like, really crappy trainer skates or rollerblades. <laughs> and I never had the real ones because they were, like, $80 or, like, over $100 sometimes for some nice rollerblades. They have a, like, a skate-off or whatever to try to win back the use of the skate park and after that resolves and the x blades get it is when brink goes up to the really hip cool tough looking skateboarders and basically says that val the leader of the x blades had been has beef with them probably and gets them to <laughs> beat up the x blades to kind of mess with them a little bit he says something like is it true that skateboarders are losers <laughs> 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 Which seems so obvious that he's playing them. Well, and they're probably used to, like, the bladers being like, skateboards are so 1967. Blading is the 90s, and they have to, like, <laughs> stand up for themselves. Yeah. If this were 1998, would you be team rollerblader or team skateboarder? I didn't. I I like doing outside stuff now, but when I was eight or nine, I would have. I mostly just listened to Spice Girls and hid in my bedroom. Oh, I did the same. But like, if somebody came up to you and said, uh, "Which is cooler, rollerblading or skateboarding?" I think I remember seeing more teens rollerblading, so I think I would have said that just based on 
Because when you're eight, teenagers are the pinnacle of cool. Yeah, I think rollerblading would have been cooler. Because it was something I could actually do. I, I wasn't even going to pretend to skateboard. I would have said skateboarding would have been a lot cooler. I feel like at the time they had those little like mini skateboards that you could play with with your fingers and you could do like little oh, yeah. tricks with your fingers. They didn't have that for rollerblades, obviously, because that would look dumb. <laughs> I was just thinking how the rollerblade one would look pretty cool, with, like little cones that you could skate around. Mm. Yeah, I guess. But you could do like little tricks with like little finger ones, and the, I mean, that was really cool. I don't know. I would have been on team skateboarding. Well, I guess there was also, like, Tony Hawk and all of yeah. that. That was really big. Let's talk about all of Brink's friends, because they're pretty awesome people. They really are. I could have been happy with just a movie with just Brink and his buddies hanging out. That would be awesome. They seemed like the most fun, like, supportive, well-adjusted, just... I would be friends with these people in a heartbeat. Andy Brink was kind of the, it seemed, it seemed a lot of the times that he was the leader of them, but it also seemed like they all were aware of their strengths within the group. And they kind of, when one needed to step up, they would, if it called for them. Yeah, I feel like uh, Brink was like the glue that held the team together, and he was uh, very supportive, um, encouraging part of the team we find out how amazing his friends are when gabriella shows up to school in a dress yeah it's clear that she's the she's a tomboy like she doesn't dress up ever and like she brings up that her mom kind of begged her slash forced her to wear the dress because back in i think it was peru um that's what everybody wears and instead of mocking her for it like i expected them to all of them are kind of just like oh okay after the initial shock they all seem to get over it pretty quickly they didn't try to humiliate her. Yeah, at one point Brink says, yo, I think that looks fat. <laughs> P-H-A-T, for sure. Very important distinction. The After the whole dress thing, the x show up and they're upset with Brink and his friends for the whole skateboarder incident. And just, it seems like they're, in general, just don't get along. So Val grabs one of Brink's buddies' skates and throws them up over the line. So he is shoeless for the day, it would seem. Yeah, but Gabriella steps in and she hands over her shoes and he can wear them for the day, even if that means she has to wear the dress all day. What a good friend. Well, I think the best part about that is that she had intended to change back into her like cool skater non-dress clothes. But she's still, like, she doesn't need to wear the dress. She could wear her school cool skater shoes and then have to wear her dress shoes with it. But she's against clashing more than she's against wearing a dress the rest of the day. <laughs> she at least has some sense of style or something, right? Yeah, it's perfect. But this part is kind of where we see the rivalry begin. Or well, at least escalate. Escalate, yes. Because... I think next we see the lunch scene, which always disgusts me out. The earthworms? The earthworms and the sandwich. I love how brilliantly executed it was, though. I thought they were going to try to do the whole, like, one of them would walk up to Val and try to talk to him. And then that same, like, person would just kind of reach behind him and try to get busted. No, they had this orchestrated. Yeah, it was pretty just well thought prank, out. bro. Well, it's the first day of school, too, which means that they didn't even have time to see exactly what the choreography for lunch was going to need to be. Val was that predictable, I think. Yeah. All of this accumulates to them having a skate-off in the middle of school. So they set up all these trash cans and, like, all these barriers for their impromptu skate sesh. And what happens? Uh... This is where Brink shows us his true colors. So it's Brink against Boomer, and Boomer is played by the same gentleman who is the Black Power Ranger. Yay! But yeah, at one point Boomer gets hurt, and Brink fall or like falls back to like go back and see if he's okay. And I think that's when we first we already get the impression that Brink is a really good guy, but this is where we get to see that he's not just happy go lucky; that he's actually down to instead of finishing the skate off and for sure winning, he stops to see if his essentially enemy is okay. It shows us that. Brink is a truly compassionate, thoughtful, 
caring human being and we should all aspire to be brink in our lives so they all get suspended which is funny to me because they get suspended at the end of the skate off which means that they were completely unattended for the entire time that they were setting up the course <laughs> they're like moving yeah, tables a very around. large group of children and so Brink's dad picks him up and obviously is not very stoked that his son is suspended on the first day of school. And while explaining to his dad how he had gotten suspended. crew were dissing us. Yeah, they were dissing <laughs> on us. So we had to beef back because they wouldn't step off, which is the most. You could tell that potentially a 40-year-old who had watched MTV for all of 10 minutes wrote that line. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love the dad's response, though. He's like don't they teach you english at school <laughs> and then he's like wait why am i asking you, you got suspended on the first day i really feel like if brink had been able to articulate his issue in uh a, a more uh relatable language it would have been okay i really feel like what he did was not that bad and i i feel like most parents would be like okay yeah there was a bully and you stood up to the bully and without fighting him. And then you also stopped to take care of somebody who you're not actually friends with, who you're actively like an antagonistic towards. But because somebody was hurt, you stopped to make sure they're OK. And like, I feel like any parent would be like, I've raised a good child. And he's too happy. That was so frustrating to me. Just like, why are you upset that your teenage child is too happy? Have you met other teenagers? You should be rejoicing. It was kind of like reversing the angsty teenager for an angsty parent. Brink's parents being upset with him rollerblading, I almost said skateboarding, leads to them having a very serious discussion in the kitchen. And this is where we find out that Brink's dad had genuinely been hurt and hadn't been able to work for a while. He's a construction worker. And they're sitting there trying to figure out how they're going to manage to continue paying bills. And this is where Brink's listening in. And where it starts to come up and kind of the seeds are planted that he's going to inevitably have to, or feel like he has to sign up for X-Blades, like to be a sponsored skater to help pay for things. Yeah, he kind of gets this idea. He needs to support his family in in the way that he feels he can best, which is to join X-Blades and become part of that team that he like doesn't like just for the money. Yeah, what stood out about this to me was that if he were helping his parents actually pay for bills, he was going to have copious amounts of money to give them. Wouldn't they wonder where he was getting very large sums of money? Especially since he halfway brought up the idea of being a sponsored skater at the dinner table, which is where his dad decided that he would get him a dog, a, a job being a dog groomer. I think it's really strange that uh, his dad was so concerned about the kind of job he would have why why would it make a difference whether he was making money from something he loves to do and he's going to do anyway which is skating or working at pup and suds maybe he was worried that brink doing something for money would kind of ruin his passion that he has for it the don't turn something you love into a job sort of thing yeah but it maybe didn't he seem was like he see that maybe it didn't seem like he really respected his passion though in in that capacity so i don't know it didn't make a lot of sense to me that the dad would be so adamant against him making money there but he would be okay with him making money elsewhere like it's the exact amount of time same amount of time that he would be putting into it so it seemed it seems like a lot of the disney channel okay a lot of the we've seen this is our third one uh but of those three that we've discussed the other two had kind of continuity or plot hole issues and i think this one, rather than having real plot holes, just had kind of inconsistencies or nonsensical reasoning with the the characters, which is kind of one of the points where it stands out that it is a children's movie. So mm -hmm. reflecting back on them as adults, you kind of start to see those things, whereas a child, you'd probably just watch that and be like, oh yeah, of course, the parent's being a jerk because parents are jerks. Mm -hmm. Whereas an adult, you're trying to be, you may, maybe kind of almost relate with the parents a little bit more. So you're more prone to try to figure out the parents' rationale behind their decisions. I guess this is why we shouldn't watch DCOMs as an adult podcast That's over. It. Goodbye. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No, this movie deals with a lot of like interesting discussions and inner monologues and like friendship and money and parents and family. I it has some really cool 
deep <laughs> deep thoughts in it. Yeah, and I don't think it's presented in a condescending way like a lot of it's not after school especially while also covering things that could easily end up being that way. Yeah, it does it in a really interesting way. It feels really wholesome in a not cheesy kind of way, just in a in a very heartwarming like you you really care about these characters and they're doing good things. They're not they're they're relatable but not in a um forced yeah in a forced yeah, yeah exactly it just feels yeah. very authentic yeah. yeah yeah so it goes into this montage where we find out Brink's dad actually did get him the pup and suds dog grooming job he's trying to still train with his friends which means he's lying to them double time about his ex blade skating and then also him training with the x bladers Brink's friends find out that he's been skating for x blades and that part felt really inevitable to me he had kept ditching them, and they were noticing he was having less and less time. So he fakes having a fever and being sick so that they don't go to the those qualifying games. And he goes anyway to participate with X-Blades. And he has a great time. It's proven that he just wants to do good on a team, getting yeah. paid or not. Even though Val and seemingly all the other team members are kind of annoying there he has some fun and he does really well rollerblading and i really felt like his friends would have understood if he had just been up front with them definitely especially if he told them the whole money thing they're also down to help they might even have tried to figure out a way to get themselves sponsored without him needing to do the x blades yeah i feel like his his biggest fear was that he was constantly telling them that they were doing like they're soul skaters they're not doing this for the money and so he was afraid that if he said that he needed money they would judge him for it but i really feel like his friends are just really cool understanding people i feel like they would have understood that you know his family's having a hard time and he really needs the money and it, they would have said hey yeah join x blades or if you don't like if we're we all hate X Blades, just let's get Pup and Suds to sponsor us. Like it, we'll start a lemonade stand. We'll do something. Yeah, they would have they would have helped. They would have pitched in. They would have done something. And he felt like he had to do this, like take this on for his family or something like that. Poor Brain. <laughs> <laughs> so this accumulates with Brink and Gabriella having to do a skate off and. Before it starts, Val warns Brink to stay on the inside of the turn, or is it the outside? The inside. No, no, no. It was the it was the outside because staying on the inside would be faster. Um, yeah, physically. He kind of gives them that warning, and as they're skating, Val goes up onto the very bumpy, very gravelly road and throws gravel onto the gravel, which causes Gabriella to fall and hurt herself. It would have been deadly if this was real life. Like, she just tumbled down a hill for several, several blocks, for sure. Yeah. Yikes. So we get the scene with, like, her on her deathbed, basically, and Brink goes to her grandma's house to see if she's okay, and the room's all dark, and the doctor said she's going to need lots of rest in, like, the most dramatic way possible. And then just, like, an arm scrape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, later. Like, yeah he like he runs into his friends outside of her house and he's like how is she doing and they're like oh it's not good buddy it's real bad <laughs> he walks in she's just got like an arm wrapped up like she probably took a couple benadryl and she's gonna go to sleep like that's probably the extent be okay of things. yeah she's gonna be fine but i think maybe it was more that betrayal that was like hurting her the concrete and his betrayal burned her. <laughs> concrete was a metaphor. Wow. I think we're reading too far into this. <laughs> Try to find, like, Lord of the Flies level <laughs> symbolism in this movie. But what does the conch shell mean? <laughs> Brink starts to feel the consequences of his actions, and he kind of is feeling very down. And his dad, who is constantly annoyed that he's so happy, realizes that he's not so happy anymore and they go out to have a little talk which is like the best parent child talk on disney channel ever i think 
this is a great scene because him and his dad have this conversation and this is where this is where brink kind of finally reveals to us that yes he was doing this for the money yeah he he wanted to help out his family but he also like had a taste for fame he wanted to know what it was like to be in magazines and to be sponsored and to like be a pro kind of and and kind of get his name out there and i thought that was so cool to show that yeah this whole time he kind of betrayed his friends for that because he kind of had that feeling he wanted to be great and at what he does and what he loves and kind of how he has to balance that with you know his passion with his friends and his family and his relationships and it all can seem overwhelming and people get hurt and now he has to make the right choice and his dad kind of talks about how you know you're defined by the company you keep and how you how well you keep it not by what you just happen to do and i thought that's a really great quote one of the circumstance to that rollerblading might not be a huge part of his life forever, but his friends could be. So he might really regret turning his back on his friends for the sake of totally. rollerblading if it's not something he's into when he's 20 or whatever. Yeah. Brink decides to make things right. He returns his rollerblades to X-Blades and he goes up to Val and he throws a disgusting milkshake in his face and he kind of makes things right with his makes things right with his friends by getting them a sponsor which happens to be pup and suds yeah the helmets he got him was pretty pretty cool too they're kind of purple shiny it looked like somebody had just like broken open a gel pin yeah he only has to work like four months with no pay but but the lesson here is that you can do very mean things to your friends and lie to them but it will be okay if you can give them awesome swag afterwards no that's how I keep my friends. I just have, like, a closet full of swag, and any time I mess up, I give them something. You give them a pair of rollerblades, but they have no wheels on them, so they have to keep just forgiving you to get more wheels to actually be able exactly. to use them. Exactly. That's the thing. Like, you keep them on the hook. That's how you keep your friends. Blade dealer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you never sample the stash. <laughs> What just happened? <laughs> you buy your friends rollerblades and they're like, Sammy, you want to go rollerblading with us? Be like, no, I can't. <laughs> That's how you keep your friends. <laughs> they end up going to the competition and I'm not sure how because they missed the qualifiers, but whatever. And so it looks like this is supposed to be some sort of X Games, but exclusively blading. Yes, it looked awesome. So everything kind of wraps up and then here comes this giant final race between Val and Brink. And they have all these cool flags set up going down all these random streets. They do a speed race down a hill and it's similar to the first speed race that Brink had against Gabrielle and this time nobody cheats. Well, no gravels involved at least. No gravels involved. However, we do get to see on camera that Val kind of pulls a nasty trick on Brink. And pretends to be hurt. And then Brink comes back and tries to help him. And then he says, I was counting on it. Yeah. And then he gets back up. He throws Brink to the ground. And he runs to the finish line. And all the cameras were watching. And everyone saw it. And everyone thinks Val is this disgusting jerk. Finally, he gets his comeuppance, right? Yeah. Don't mess with Brink. (laughs) Yeah. At one point while they're doing this, there's a, somebody has a speedometer thing up and it shows them going 42 miles per hour, which I looked into and that's 10 miles per hour more than the world record to this day of a speed wow. race competition. So they, they did pretty good. They were going really fast down that hill. Do you, was there any like anybody in like the fact checking department for this movie? Did uh, nobody look into there it? There was a fact checking department. <laughs> Nobody was looking into this, like, what would be a reasonable speed for, like, really fast, but not, you know, out of the realm of possibility? Well, they also made this in a time before IMDb and before Wikipedia, so if kids wanted to be like, that doesn't seem right, they would have to go to their library and look at an encyclopedia or check out the Guinness (laughs) Book of World Records to actually fact check. Well, 
the race ends and Brink wins. Yay! And he kind of finally gets everything that he wanted. He has this sponsor coming. Hey, dude, like, be part of our team. Be Lead X-Blades. We want you. And he's like, no. I choose my friends and puppin' suds. Forever. <laughs> Freeze frame. Freeze frame. The most abrupt ending. I've, I felt like there was so much more to, like, wrap up. Like, there should have been, like, a denouement there. But it was just... There could have been more, I think. Yeah. But... I am completely satisfied with any freeze frame ending. Harry Potter, Breakfast Club, I'm cool with it. Okay. Uh, Breakfast Club, sure. Anything else is incorrect. <laughs> Nothing will ever be as epic. I don't know. I I really liked this movie, though. It felt really original and authentic. And... Even as a kid, I would have been a little bit angry that at the end when the guy was offering him money, he said, no, I'm going to stick with my friends. He'd be like, just get your friends in on the deal, too. Like, you guys. Yeah. Can... How do you, what side do you choose? Do you choose, like, his friend's side, which is all about soul skating, all about just doing it because you love to do it? Or are you more like, hey, just take the money? We saw Brink skating with X-Blades, and it didn't, aside from the company he was keeping being unsavory, he was skating the same way. So he wasn't having to give up how he skated for money. He wasn't half. it's not the same as if you're trying to be a musician and you, ha- you end up writing good commercial jingles instead of creating art that's different. This way, he wasn't really sacrificing anything aside from his friends. So if he could get his friends in on the skull, like, I, I don't think that would have been bad. Yeah, I don't feel like there was any sense of, like, selling out, aside Yeah, aside from the company he was keeping, but it wasn't, like, he wasn't sacrificing any of his, like, artistry, and I'm putting uh, that in quotes, Gabriella for says, the money. that's how it all starts. You do- start doing something for love, then you start doing it for money, and before you know it, you're just another sellout. I just don't think there's anything wrong with making money from doing something that you love. I feel like yeah. that's... Uh, I completely agree. Kind of the dream, really. Yeah, if he's not, if you're not making money from the thing, or in this case, he would have had to keep working at the dog groomer, which meant he would have had less time to skateboard or skate, rollerblade, which in this circumstance is the opposite of what he would want. He wants to spend all of his time rollerblading. So he's having to sacrifice his rollerblading to not sell out, which just yeah. doesn't make sense. This movie kind of presented him with two options which was rollerblade for money or rollerblade with your friends but i think that brink it would be like the perfect in between where he could skate for money and be sponsored and still love it and do it with passion and be successful at it so i don't know i just really like that they brought up that kind of challenge to people you know do something that you love for money or for passion or, you know, how do you find that balance? Yeah. I feel like there, there was definitely a middle ground that could have been found, uh, that the, the movie kind of didn't address, which is fine. It was, the movie wasn't trying to be, uh, you know, trying to tell you how to live your life as an adult. (laughs) So no, it was just presenting these ideas, you know, to a Uh, younger generation that hasn't had to deal with that yet. Well, compared to the previous two movies we watched, I think if that's our biggest nitpick, it's doing exceptionally, exceptionally well compared to the others. Definitely. Definitely. This movie is above and beyond the previous two movies that we've seen. Oh yeah. I thought it was just so refreshing to have a character that, that, like, was really passionate and was really, like, you know, go-get-it attitude and, I don't know, just a, a really good person. <laughs> he's kind and he's positive. Just a very refre- you You hit the nail on the head, Josh, with the refreshing. <laughs> it's so great to watch. It's so heartwarming to watch somebody who's just a good person. He's also a real person and he made mistakes and he hurt other people and he threw milkshakes at people's faces you know we all have those days it's also very refreshing to have a girl character in a movie that wasn't there to inevitably end up with one of the male buddies like even in media today that's not super common where gabrielle at the end wasn't somebody's girlfriend she was one of their friends and she stayed that way i thought gabriella was an incredibly progressive character for the time uh being uh both a 
a girl and just a, a woman of color. There was there was many references to just like somebody said something like go back to Mexico and she's like she's not from Mexico, but that's something you would hear today. And it's just it was it was really ahead of its time with the Gabriella character for sure. She was just a really great character. I feel like we haven't talked enough about how great Gabriella was. So as far as Disney Channel movies go, I would give this a solid 9 out of 10. It's one of my favorite Disney Channel movies. I was really excited to watch this one this week. And I feel like from here until the next 5 or 10 movies, it's like everything gets really great. This is Disney Channel's prime right here. And Brink I'm really... I'm excited. Yeah, Brink really kickstarted it. I would also <laughs> give it... A solid nine out of ten for Disney movies. This is <laughs> it was positive, it was fun, it made me excited, made me want to be more passionate about things in my life and had relevant issues. I mean and a great character. What more can you ask for? And cool music and cool locations and a and a good story. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> it was just good. I think I'll give it I'm having trouble deciding between a 9 and a 10, obviously. I think I'm going to stick with 9, though, because of the the lesson they were trying to kind of got muddled, like you said, where there was a middle option that didn't really get discussed. Like, had they done that, it would have been definitely a 10. But as is, I think in a rank is one of the top DCOMs that we'll watch. Certainly the best we've watched so far. I think this is the <laughs> Which first... honestly isn't saying much yet. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the first one that we've watched that gives me that nostalgic Disney Channel movie feeling even if i i hadn't seen this before yes that's what i love about these when you like hit that moment where you kind of remember this from your childhood but but you also are watching it with like a different set of lenses now and it like somehow comes together to be this like relevant mishmash of emotions or something so if you were to go to a movie theater and see this what would you rate it then i think i'd do a seven if i went into it expecting a 90s preteen young adult movie I would, it, a seven would work the soundtrack was good enough on its own it had a song from the suicide machines which was a pretty big band and that's a pretty good get for a disney channel movie yeah i think as far as like 90s teen movies this is pretty on par with what else was out there uh so i'd give it maybe like a seven and a half it's a really great feel good movie i enjoyed every second of it and i would have enjoyed watching it in a theater as well i would agree i would say 7.5 it's even if i didn't know what i was going into i think it was edited really well this all the script was written really well the characters and the acting was great i loved it thanks you guys for listening to this episode of we're potting this together next week we'll be discussing the spooky classic halloween town so spooky have any questions comments or memories of your favorite disney channel original movies you can find us on social media or email us at pot in this together at gmail.com and if you like what you heard don't forget to subscribe and leave a review